Hello everybody, this is Technoli and here we go. Alright, so what you want to do is start tapping the delete key to get into the BIOS. Most of your motherboards for custom build computers are delete, but uh, check, some are F2, but this one you just press the delete key. Now I want to go over to the settings and I want to make sure that everything is set here properly because a Hackintosh will not boot with standard uh, like Windows settings. So you have to turn off some things, okay? So let's go to the Advanced tab. PCI Subsystem Settings. That's fine. There's nothing in there we need to worry about. Um, this is your ACPI settings. We don't need to worry about that. Integrated Graphics, okay? Or Integrated Peripherals, I'm sorry. So here we can have the onboard LAN controller turned on. Everything else I disabled. Now make sure your hard drive is set to AHCI mode or this thing will not work. If you set it to RAID like that, it's not going to work. You got to make sure it's set to AHCI. Um, all of this other stuff can be just disabled for right now. This has an M2 drive in it, but we're going to install the the uh, operating system on an external SATA drive for right now. Your uh, audio controller is enabled and then I turn off HP uh, T or HPET and also make sure you turn off your serial ports. Okay, so we'll go back out of there. Uh, integrated graphics configuration, we are using the RX 580 graphics card so we're going to turn that on as opposed to integrated graphics which would be that setting so that is set right USB configuration everything here can be enabled it's fine super IO of course like I said before disabled make sure you do that power management setup you don't need to worry about um, disable all of your fast boot your MSI fast boot anything in here in the Windows OS configuration we want to disable it. Wake up events uh, for right now we're gonna leave everything disabled. Secure erase you don't need to worry about and that's it. So on this keyboard or most of them or a BIOS you just hit F10 to save and exit. Now with your USB flash drive that we made Okay, in the previous part of the video, we're going to put that in right here in the USB 2.0 port, which is right here on this board. Okay, got to plug it in a USB 2.0 port. You don't want to plug it in a, in a USB 3. All right, so now we're going to boot from the USB drive that we just made. Okay, so what'll what'll happen is you'll come up to the Clover boot screen. And there it is. It's scanning entries. And then all we want to do here is we want to make sure we're on the external, which is the external USB drive, and just hit enter. Now, this will take quite a bit of time. And I mean quite a bit of time, and you have to be patient. Um, if it gets stuck here on any of these white lines that you see in here, because this is just all kinds of system information and everything, if it gets stuck on one of these, then we've done something wrong and we need to find out what it is. So, you know, just message, message me down below if you're having any errors right there and uh, I'll get back to you. But this will take quite a bit of time, so I'm going to speed it up. Okay, finally, that takes a long time. And you'll think, oh, it's stuck. But no, it's just taking a long time. Now, make sure you don't have your your Ethernet cable plugged in right now because we're going to have to change the date on this computer to get this to function right. Okay, so make sure that's not plugged in. Okay, so here we are, the fun part. Disk utility is where we want to go because we got to format the hard drive. So you want to go over here to this drop-down menu just to be sure and show all devices. 
So here is our 240 gigabyte SATA drive. This is our USB flash drive that we're booted on right now. And this is just the disk image that's on the boot drive. So we'll click on this one, click erase. Name it whatever you want to name it. I like to name it internal HD because I'll have a lot of other hard drives hooked up. Make sure it's Mac OS Extended Journaled and make sure it is GUID partition map. Okay, click erase. And this goes quick because it's a SATA. All right, once we get done here, we're ready to just click done and then click the red button. We're ready to install Mac OS. Now watch this. Aha, uh -huh. this copy of the install Mac OS Mojave application is damaged and can't be used to install Mac OS. Okay, when I first saw this message, I freaked out. And it took me a long time to figure this one out. But all you do is click OK, go over here to the utilities, drop down to terminal. Okay, and then you want to type in date. And notice the date is today. So we need to change it back three years. So I type in date, space, and then we're going to put in uh, today's date, which is 12. 31 and it's uh, 01 oh I'm sorry 0147 that's your hours and minutes and then we're gonna put in 16 so that gets us back to 2016 now the reason I wanted you to keep your LAN cable disconnected is because if you plug it in it's possible that Mac OS will say, oh, your date's wrong, and I'm going to correct it for you, and it won't work. So just leave it disconnected. All right, so we're done with this, so we can just go down here, quit terminal, and then install Mac OS again. Let's give it a try. There it is. So now we click continue. Agree. Agree. There's our internal hard drive that we already formatted. We click install. Now this will take quite a bit of time as well, so just sit type. You can watch the progress bar if you like, and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as this is done. Okay, just to show you, it says about four minutes remaining. So right there. So sit tight. Here we go. Okay, two minutes. Ah, you see that? It just restarted all on its own. That's okay. It's supposed to do that even before it's done. So don't worry about it. It's going to reboot and we have to boot back up to the USB drive again in the Clover boot menu, which will be coming right up here. Okay. But now we need to select the hard drive that we just started to install Mac OS on, Mojave. So when this comes up, we're going to have to use the arrow keys to arrow over to the hard drive, not the USB stick. Okay, so here's our USB drive. This is our hard drive now. So just hit enter to boot from that now. Now this again will take quite a while. Be patient. Okay, as you can see, it's doing basically the same process as the USB drive did, but now we're on the SSD, external hard drive. Well, internal hard drive. Okay, all right, so now we're coming up to, we got to continue installing the operating system. And this will take a little bit of time as well. It says 15 minutes remaining. So give it a chance and we'll pause right now and wait till it comes up. Okay, we've got seven minutes remaining it says. And like I said before, this takes a while, so be patient. Okay, here it says about one minute remaining. All right, 
It's going to reboot one more time. So we still have to boot from, we have to leave the USB plugged in because we're going to boot from it one more time. And then we're going to, of course, switch over to the internal hard drive. Okay, welcome to Clover. Okay, and again we're going to make sure we're on boot Mac OS from internal HD. Hit enter. And now when we boot up we can finish our Mac OS install. starting to get faster okay so here we're ready to finish up we're gonna go down to USA pick our country all right United States and choose your keyboard layout now this is the time you want to go ahead and plug in your Ethernet cable so we'll plug that in and then hit continue and then it's going to find the USB or find the internet connection. But now let's unplug it and click continue. Don't transfer any information for now. And then here we just agree and agree. And now we can plug our cable back in. And I'm just going to give it a name Mac and a password. All right. Creating an account. Customize settings. I always like turn on enable location services and I turn off these two. And that's it guys and gals. Oh yeah, I want Surrey. And here you can choose the light or a dark background. I'm going to go with light, especially for this video. Setting up your Mac. Now from here, we just continue and I've got a Windows keyboard plugged in, so I'm just going to tell it what kind it is. All right. From here, you'll notice that up here we have our USB drive. And on that USB drive, remember, we transferred some files over here to it. We transferred Clover Configurator and MultiBeast, but I'm not going to use MultiBeast. I just want you to click on Clover Configurator, and this is really important stuff. you got to get this right. It wants to give me a new version. I'm okay with the old version, so we'll skip. We have to click on Mount EFI, so we have to mount both the hard drive EFI folder and the EFI folder on the USB stick. So mount, put in your password for your login. Alright, so I'm going to put this one over here. This is the one on my USB. And then we're going to do this one, put in the password and open that partition. And you'll notice there's no EFI folder in here. So what I want to do is I want to copy the EFI folder from the USB drive into the EFI folder on the hard drive that we just finished installing. Super important or the computer will not boot without the USB. So we'll click quit the uh, Clover configurator We'll go ahead and eject the uh, USB drive and then let's restart and see if it boots by itself. I'm going to pull I'm going to pull the USB thumb drive out of the computer. Now here we don't have to do anything. We'll just let the computer reboot. It'll go into the clover 
bootloader and we don't have to touch anything. We can just let it go. We go ahead and hit enter. And you're going to notice that it's booting up much faster now because we're strictly on the internal SSD hard drive. And there we go. We are finished with that. Okay? Now what we'll do is we'll test a couple things. So let's go ahead and check the internet. It's working. Nice. Now this is a 4K monitor. It's big. So we'll go into here in System Preferences and click on Displays and then hold the Option key and press Scaled and you'll see all of these different resolutions that this system is now capable of. So on this one I'm going to try 2560 by 1440. That looks good. It's a little small, but let's try 2048 by 1152. Ah, let's try that for now. I want to keep it big for you guys. Now I'm going to go back down to System Preferences again and I'm going to click on Sound and on Output I want to choose internal speakers. I'm also going to say show menu bar, show volume on menu bar. So up here I've got the sound. And input is set to internal microphone. Uh, that's fine. Or line input. That's fine too. So now everything is working. Now let's go back. Let's go to YouTube. All right. Cool. So we'll click on something here. And sound is working. I don't have speakers hooked up, but I just checked it in my headphones. Everything's working. The video is smooth as silk. Everything is working properly. So there you go. It. Now, the only thing that I found on this that I haven't got to work perfectly is the energy saver. When the computer goes to sleep and display goes to sleep and all of that stuff. So I left it to default which you know you can adjust this you can adjust your computer to go to sleep at uh, different times you know whatever you choose here this display can be turned to go off at different times too. So that's all fine and everything, but when I wiggle the mouse or I click the keyboard, you know, enter or spacebar or something, it doesn't come back to life. So what I have to do is just press the on off button just one time and everything comes back. So I didn't think that that was too big of a sacrifice for having this beautiful of a Hackintosh and really relatively easy. So, you treat it like a regular Mac. I'm going to go ahead and restart one more time. And just remember, with a Hackintosh, you're always going to come up to that boot screen. So you have to go into that menu to boot. But it's all automatic. It's no big deal. And it's fast as can be. So there you go. So, to recap, we've got an i5-7400 processor. You can upgrade that if you'd like. Um, you can spend less if you want uh, and get a cheaper CPU. Um, we've got the XFX uh, RX 580 8GB graphics card. So there you go. So we're back in. That's all there is to it, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. Ooh.